Guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be for StarCast TV. And man, we got an awesome lineup here in the upper right-hand corner. We have Snow starting as the Red Protoss, bottom left-hand corner. We have Action starting as the Teal Zerg. This is going to be from a prize match between the two. And it is on Benzene. And if you guys have not seen Benzene in quite some time, I have not either. Should be a fun one. We've got the standard natural expansion with a pretty sizable gap, but there's also large travel distances, and you've got kind of the bridges in the middle. You also have the exposed third, but of course it's across a lot of bridges. Otherwise, kind of an interesting map that's created some interesting matches across time. It reminds me of some... It makes me think of Destination, is what it makes me think of on almost... It's that style of map where it's like solid, but it's also a little bit odd. And the even though the bases by air looks somewhat close by the travel distance by ground is somewhat odd and there's also lots of nice little ramps to create some fun battle action in between between the two i'm not sure who to favor action is one of those guys that can beat absolutely anybody and when he's in top form he is an outstanding player looks like he's going to go for an overpool play it safe which makes sense because it is a two-player map snow on the other hand has been in multiple instances one set away from being an ASL championship. And if he wasn't, if it was not for players like Rain and not for players like Flash, which top of the top, we could say he's a two time champion. His weakest matchup is versus Zerg. Benzene, however, overall, I believe, favors Protoss. So should be an intense one. Probe getting a little bit of damage against that drone overall. And it's always annoying to have that in the base. In the meantime, looks like we actually have a 12 Nexus opposite side. So Snow going for the greedy economic build. I believe he's going to be able to, pay, to pull this off. One, because of the sizable distances. Also, because of the overpool opener. Pro getting some decent harassment, hugging that wall. Does want to get eyes and see how many Zerglings pop out. Looks like there's only been a pair of Zerglings fielded initially here by action we are seeing the forge opener rather than uh anything absolutely crazy on the opposite side one cannon is going to be necessary but snow able to confirm wants to see that second egg pop and see whether it is drones or not to know whether he can cheat potentially looks like he yeah he's going to go ahead and go for gateway first upon seeing that in the meantime natural expansion about halfway finished gas being tacked on for action, we'll see what he's up to. It looks like he's already got a third drone making its way to the upper left-hand corner of the map. Is gonna go ahead and make that his third base. Which means, I assume he's gonna go more towards airplay. It is possible that he could, if he, he could opt for something along 973-ish play. Whatever happens though, he needs to maintain a strong degree of map control. Two additional Zerglings being built. Initial Zergling's going to go ahead and get that scouting information out in the field. Still no cannon on the front. First Zealot being produced. Cybernetic score down. So this Zergling actually, as it, make it makes its way up, might be able to... Nope, never mind. Snow just in time. But really getting absolute maximum economic efficiency here with no cannons on the front. And that's worth having these probes off the line momentarily. The two Zerglings going up, and it looked like right when they thought about going ahead and making a shot to take a probe down to go ahead and get scouting information instead being pushed back first photon cannon being pressed at this stage this probe for snow going to get some critical scouting information of that base in the upper left hand corner also with this cybernetic score unfortunately with this location i believe that overlord's going to spot it so i think snow is maybe trying to I don't know if he was trying to telegraph or he was trying to hide it in this instance. So we'll see if he's going to play mind games after this. But that Overlord's not that far away from confirming that bit of tech. Four drones in the natural expansion at this stage. And we are seeing a tech two layer just about finished. So we got three bases up and running. We are going to see movement to Spire Tech. Stargate also being built along that corner. Only one Zealot on the forward field plus one weapons being built. Probe's able to go back to that line. Now four Zerglings out, but Snow's kept this probe alive the entire time and has gotten plenty of scouting information. I believe he's been able to confirm that hatch relocation. The Zerglings finally able to get that surround and wipe it out. And it looks like additional drones being cycled up to that upper left-hand corner. 
to go ahead and get saturation there. So it looks like we're going to see pretty standard three gate play, plus one weapons being upgraded to make those Corsairs even stronger in their work against that anti-air pylon being preventatively placed in that upper right-hand corner just in case there's some action along that power generator line. Second cannon preventatively being placed. And nice zergling spread here from action across the rest of the map going ahead and making sure that no additional probe or zealot snuck out. Corsair on its way, fourth hatchery being planted. So it looks like it's gonna be a pushback. So it's a three hatch into four hatchery play. Probably gonna see an initial pair of scourge and whether snow can keep this Corsair alive or not will be absolutely huge. You really wanna keep that information solid. A huge saturation in the upper left. Another fifth hatchery being planted. Overlord gonna take some damage here. The scourge are being produced nearby. So it's going to be close between that Overlord getting taken out and that Scourge completing. Second Corsair making its way up to go ahead and engage. So Scourge finished. Overlord survives with just three health before the two Corsair have to back out. Two additional Scourge joining. And right now we're just seeing a massive macro fight. Second gas being tacked on. Zealots now fielding, and now does Action have an answer for these Zealots? Third hatchery planting the upper left-hand corner, but there are absolutely no defense in place. One sunken colony being built, but the three Zealots with the plus one, which should be pretty close to finishing when they're able to engage, could be danger. The drones are gonna have to pull off the line. And actually, do they even protect this edge hatchery? They do, it does not. So the Zealot's just gonna go ahead and regroup, attack that hatchery, that might force a cancellation. The Zerglings beelining, trying to swing right back around. Scourge going ahead and scouting. And a Mutalus finally joining the fray. But it takes a long time to deal with those Zealots, and that is gonna force the cancellation on that hatchery. Big economic win. Zealots retreating. Scourge joining, just in case Corsair are gonna go ahead and try to help defend these Zealots. Two additional Zealots wandering out in the field. It looks like they want to maybe try to mix it up. Sneak through and sneak across the line. Maybe pick a drone. There is a something colony there on defense as well. One drone getting caught in transfer. Unfortunately, these Zealots might end up losing their lives. The Mutalus count growing. Scourge joining. Corsair fleet is at five. Plus one weapons just now finishing. So we'll see if Snow starts to try to pick some air fights at this stage. Needs to be very, very careful that he stays away from those Scourge. No cannon at the natural. One cannon to help defend the main. Two additional gateways being plopped down. A Dark Templar sneaking underneath. I'm not sure if that Shimmer was spotted or not. Some Zelts checking that bottom right-hand corner. And the Mutalisks engaging, taking some initial free fire from those Corsairs. The Scourge want to try to bully that back and open up some fight path. Otherwise, Dark Templar making its way across. No kills as of yet. There's detection and a sunken colony there, but keep in mind Dark Templar can get damage done regardless. And look at kind of look at the, the spread, the vision spread currently from action. He's doing a good job of making those Scourge spot absolutely everything. So the Dark Templar looking to do some work, managing to get one kill right there, interrupting a lot of mining. Hydralis Den has been confirmed as well. Lurker Tech about halfway finished. But right now, Action really is not taking a lot of damage. He's been able to drone up quite a bit. Snow still sitting on the two bases, now moving out with an Archon, a grouping of Zealots. He has plus one weapons right there. So the Archon gonna try to box away those Scourge and those Mutalisks and allow the Zealots and everything else to try to march to the upper left-hand corner. And actually the Corsair backing out for some reason with this grouping. We've got eight Corsair, they do have plus one weapons. And they can absolutely maul overlords if they can just get to a location where overlords are present. Some Scourge taking some free damage. This overlord's certainly going to lose its life mid-map. 20 supply lead currently for Snow, but as action starts to transition towards a stronger macro point in the matchup, let's see if that holds right now. Seeing it a pretty good drone saturation, Snow, with that aggression, going to go ahead and grab his third. Defending it with a Dark Templar, but going to go ahead and push back, trying to re-engage and maybe catch these Mutalisks with this Archon mid-map. 
the Mutalisk looking to group, and actually they could make short work if those Corsair aren't Johnny on the spot and making sure that Mutalisk force has to stay back. In the base, we see that Queen's Nest being built from action. He's going to head and establish that fourth base to, to maintain that economic lead. And we do have Lurkers in place in the upper left-hand corner. This is going to be a difficult location to breach. A lot of Zealots and Archons mid-map, but both players still in more of a, a defensive posture, kind of just wanting to maintain vision, some Zerglings streaming out. They might be able to get on location. Dark Templar spotting the Zerglings as they're making way across, able to get a kill right there. But otherwise, the cannons are coming online. So actually, going to go ahead and back off with the rest of those Zerglings. A half second earlier, that would have been it. The Mutalisk micro from action, perfect against that Archon. Zerglings engaging, trying to take that Archon out. The Corsair now on location, but that Archon is left with just a sliver of energy and health. Big Scourge Force out on the map. If Action can micro his way into a solid engagement, might be able to take that Corsair fleet. These Corsairs are huge in number, but they've really only taken down three Overlords at this stage. Usually you want more out of that, but nevertheless, Snow up 20 supply. Plus one weapons, plus one armor versus the plus one. The Hydra is able to take out the Archon, but taking a bit of damage for their efforts from those Zealots. So the Corsair fleet able to chip away quite a bit at a very minimal Mutalisk army. They're just getting obliterated midfield as they're caught there. The Scourge need to be careful that they just don't waste their lives because with this many Corsairs, they get taken out very rapidly. Action trying to engage with a huge amount. But you can see if there's just a bit of distance, those Corsairs can absolutely crush those Scourge. A slew of Hydralisks being built underneath, but is it going to be sufficient to keep those Corsairs from doing their work? In the meantime, third base is up and saturated, a fourth base being grabbed in that bottom right-hand corner. So Snow, with the threat of the Corsairs, able to get that up and rolling. Two hatcheries in the mid-map as well. This is going to turn into an explosive macro fight. Zerglings flooding across, finding Zealots midfield. The Corsairs able to kill a couple Scourge as they're spawning. Yeah, they don't have the distance, and that Overlord going to get taken out at the main. Two Overlords getting taken out here. And you can just see how quickly they shred through that. Two Hydwells doing what they can. And a flank able to land... Unfortunately, not able to take out any Corsair, but able to damage a few. That's going to put action in the red. Another army's been macroed up from Snow behind this. He's got a 30 supply lead. Action has some lurkers. He's got the Hydalisks. Hive Tech is here. He does have the Defiler Mount. Still working on Kasum. But Snow has some Storm, some well-upgraded Zealots, and he still has got that Corsair fleet overhead. Able to get a quick kill there, and you can see how quickly these Overlords die. Snow, without an Observer, going to go ahead and back out on that top corner. He's looking for a bit of a split attack because he's got those Zealots along that additional edge. He's got all sorts of gateways to pump that economy behind this. Even has a Stargate up that is remaining silent. Engaging with that Observer, dropping the Psy Storms. Secretly, I'm hoping for a switch to, Ar to Arbiter in this match. Probably not gonna happen though. Dragoons doing damage as plus two weapons kicking online, able to push back some of those troops. Still a lurker there to the north. I think the Observer might have gotten picked off or at least pushed back. So withdrawing, the Corsair fleet looks like it managed to take some damage in that bottom left-hand corner. I assume some course, uh, the Hydra is engaging right there. A few Zealots lately getting surrounded by some Zerglings midfield as well. But Snow, still in a pretty good position. He's got a decent sized economy. Late game tech, but these Zerglings are on the verge of hitting Adrenal upgrades. And unfortunately, right here, able to get on top of those Dragoons. Action checking out additional bases just to make sure more Zerglings flooding across. 
yeah, wants to catch some High Templar or Dragoons out on the field. Finding the Corsairs, the Corsairs need to be a little bit careful. That they don't just get caught flat-footed out in the open. Four base versus four base, usually, and as I say that, a fifth base coming online. The Zerglings trying to stream across, action just trying to test and find some I Templar. It looks like the Zerglings are baiting out some Psy Storm, but getting pretty well cleaned up otherwise. Some Zerglings gonna get deny the, the six o'clock location, but not denying the one o'clock location. So Snow in a very strong economic position. Has a big ball out in the field. However, Defilers are now starting to take the field. One lone Dragoon getting stuck out there. Still a lot of the main starting to mine out. Still a lot of gateways to push. The units out midfield. Plague being dropped by those Defilers. Zerglings and Lurkers pressing up behind it. A lot of them eating Side Storm. So if things persist right now, Snow should be able to keep regenerating troops and action will be pinned to the left-hand side of the map. However, with the Filer Lurker laying, bases can get wiped out in a hurry. So the Corsairs really need to keep an eye on troop movement so that action can respond in a hurry. Just needs to hold territory, starve his opponent out. Looks like some drone, sorry, some probes getting caught. They are gonna be able to get up to that cannon line. The Zergling's not getting a lot there. Some Psy Storm exchanged in the middle. Psy Storm for Plague. More Plague being dropped to keep those troops weak. 12 o'clock base being grabbed by action, but that's still going to keep the bases overall even for snow. More Zerglings flooding across. We have a couple Zelts going ahead and trying to deny that five o'clock base. Zerglings sweeping across to engage in a bit of a fight. First swarm of the match in midfield. That looks like with some nice upgrades, level two weapon, level two carapace, level three weapons, level two armor on snow side. Starting to stream across the map for action. Reaver already in defensive position at the three o'clock, recognizing this is gonna turn into more of a macro fight and wants to get those favorable exchanges. Doesn't wanna lose a base to Dark Swarm out in the field. This grouping of troops looks like it's gonna get cleaned up. Snow walking headlong into a lurker trap midfield. The Reaver and Psystorm going ahead and cleaning up the attacks to the north. So Snow with a absolute fortress here at the 12 o'clock, pressing forward, able to grab some shots on lurkers before they're able to burrow. They're gonna go ahead and try to escape, but taking big shots from those scarabs before they're able to do so. Snow swing to the south, but really doesn't look like he needs to. One, the 12 o'clock base up and running, or I should say 11 o'clock up, but not yet saturated. Action currently holding the high ground to potentially threaten that one o'clock, but Snow in the meantime, sweeping across the south portion of this map. And this is where, because of all of the features on this map, it becomes very, very difficult for both players, because you got to engage at all locations at once, otherwise you got to sweep. Action responding rapidly to this army sneaking across that southern barrier. Snow, now that he's been seen, dropping some side storm and retreating. But troops for action are coming out just a little bit piecemeal, so eating a lot of damage. Reaver is joining the fray. Lurker is holding up short. Zerglings trying to stream through. They do not have swarm support. They do have support of some plagues dropped earlier, making these troops all the weaker. Reaver's trying to clear out those Zerglings to keep the rest of their troops alive. And action now peeling down, pouring on the pressure. The shuttle is going to be able to sneak out. The Archons look like they might be able to escape with their lives, but the rest of that attack force has been obliterated. Supply counts are now even, which is a scary place. But Snow has set up for a long-term war of attrition. 
Regardless, he still needs to figure out a way to go ahead and deny the 6 o'clock location and the 5 o'clock location to action if he's going to prevail in this match overall. Plus one weapons online. But level 3 Carapace, not too far. The Zealot's getting cleaned up. It looked like action realizing that 5 o'clock base is going to be key. Attacking, pinning back troops to prevent reinforcements actually might be able to take this base out, dropping a big plague and a swarm as lurkers are approaching there. Sidestorm being dropped. There are reavers as well. The reavers being pushed back to the corner of the base. But Action doesn't even need to take this out. He just needs to go ahead and establish this location. He has a drone to do so. Still pouring on the pressure. Stalwart reaver and two cannons remaining. The shuttle wiped out. The reaver taken out. And the cannons getting wiped out. Dragoons are moving up, but they're still swarmed to defend what's left. Looks like there are High Templar, but one more Psy Storm remaining. And it's a brilliant Psy Storm wiping out a lot of the Hydralisks. Plague, however, getting dropped on what remains. So Snow barely holding on to this base. More troops, you can just see them streaming across the mini-map. Ashen going ahead and grabbing that 5 o'clock base, pouring on the pressure, wiping... Wiping out that lower 3 o'clock location. Now Snow starting to get starved for minerals. His natural expansion is gone. His main has just a smidgen of minerals left. He's only mining in that bottom right hand corner and at this 1 o'clock base. That 1 o'clock base solidly defended. But that's not slowing down Action's economy. A lot of units plagued there. Some Zerglings able to sneak in. Psystorm. Blanketing. Still some Zerglings able to get there. Looks like they are... Some probes are sacrificed under the side storm to keep that base up and running. Lurker's still working. It looks like... Snow not even going to bother to fight over that location. Most of the minerals have been expended. Retreating to the bridge. Dropping a side storm over the bunched up troops. Brilliant engagement there. And it looks like the Corsair is going to try to sneak back out. See what they can get done. Some more great storms over to this location. Another attack with Swarm, however. In the bottom right hand corner, Snow needs to defend this base. Corsair is working on the Overlord's bottom left hand corner. Looks like some additional Corsair is going to go ahead and join that. So working on the supply count, that is going to push action into the red. But it doesn't look like it's going to be enough to save this bottom right hand base, nor the base at the lower 3 o'clock location. Action continuing to push up troops into the 3 o'clock. Reaver drop at the 11 o'clock location. Going to go ahead and take out a lot of drones here. It looks like Action does not care, though. Continuing to pour out the pressure. He can go ahead and resaturate this base. Maybe retake it. Finally, some attack troops moving up. Those Reavers in a really nasty location, though, for Zerglings and other troops to engage. So small victories here. But not, not for long. So, yeah, able to empty that up. That's reduced... The worker count, but has not eliminated it. So now it is the lone one o'clock base mining. See if we see some remining at the main. More High Templar are being fielded to utilize that gas in the late game. Five o'clock base being grabbed. The Corsair still hunting for additional damage. Action way up in supply in a great position to close this out. Killing those probes that are distance mining at the three o'clock and starting to close the noose. Get a degree of a contain here at Snow's natural expansion. Snow still trying to fight it out. The Corsairs trying to find overlords. Are able to do so. And they're calling GG. Incredible macro from action. To close out that game. Great play all the way around. Want to thank StarCast TV for getting me the replay. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for listening.